So hello everybody and welcome to today's short webinar for primary teachers entitled In the Class and on the Pitch, How to Use GEA Cross Curricular Resources. Uh, we hope that you uh, and all your families and the pupils are well and safe um, and that you enjoy today's webinar. My name is Pat Colhan. I am a National uh, Games Development Officer, part of the uh, GN Coaching and Games Development team uh, in Crow Park. Uh, I'm joined by my colleague Owen Tuhi, um in Crow Park, who is the GA Officer Training Coordinator. Uh, David Goff, who many of you will know already, I'm sure. Uh, David is currently the GA Learning and Development Officer at DCU St. Patrick's uh, College. Um, he's a primary teacher of considerable experience and a, a, an esteemed referee, uh, most notably of last year's All-Ireland football final. Um, the main speaker for today's, for this afternoon's event is uh, Dr. Richard Bowles. Um, Dr. Richard Bowles is a P lecturer in Mary Immaculate College Limerick. He's a former primary school teacher and is heavily and has been heavily involved in common among school activities at county and national level during this time. His PhD thesis examined the teaching of Gaelic games in primary schools and his current research interests include the provision of meaningful experiences in PE and sport. Uh, he coaches um, for his local club Ula at both uh, adult and juvenile levels. So um, today's webinar, today's webinar, um, I'll speak for a few minutes. I'll just um, introduce uh, the, the webinar as I'm doing and talk to you about some of the resources that we have developed, uh, some of the learning resources. Uh, I'll move on then very briefly to Owen Tuhi, who's going to just very quickly outline some of the, the measures that the, the that the GEA, the LGFA and the Camogie Association have taken to date around COVID-19. Um, just very briefly touch on that and some of the successes we've had to date, thankfully. Um, I'm going to move on then to David Goff, who will um, speak about the staff training that we've done with, with all games development staff around the country, um, just to, to provide some reassurance there um, as, they, as they contact you to um, um, uh, come into schools if, 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 if possible. And then, as I said, finally, the main speaker is uh, Dr. Richard Bowles. He'll talk to you about, um, I suppose, uh, you know, creating PE and sport uh, opportunities in the school environment, particularly in the context of COVID-19. OK, so um, you might have seen um, in recent days, uh, you might have seen a document circulated to this effect. Um, it should be with you in your school. Um, if not, uh, it should be with you very, very soon. It's available on learning.ga.ie forward slash primary dash school. It's basically a, a letter to, to all schools in the 32 counties, um, basically stating that we as a uh, in, in G, as, as the, the, G, the GEA, the LGFA and the Camogie Association combined uh, primarily through our through our, our staff and and through through um, volunteers in the community. We're here to help um, at this time of great challenge. Um, uh, in, 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 in society and in, and in particular uh, primary schools. It's a, just a positive reinforcement to say that we are, we're here as always to provide um, physical activity uh, services and opportunities to, um, to the children uh, right throughout the 32, the 32 counties. One, one thing um, we're, we're particularly proud of is, is we've condensed um, all of the resources that we, we have produced over the last um, number of years into one document and it might just look like a document with loads of text, but there's a ferocious amount of effort um, and, and thought um, gone into producing that. Um, I, I would argue unparalleled, certainly in Ireland, um, unparalleled uh, a bank of, of, of learning resources, primarily um, um, pr for, for everything from the development of movement skills, physical literacy, um, the obviously the games themselves, um, yard games, and, uh, and 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 other cross cross curricular resources. Um, th there's there's just a pile of stuff in there. It's there in one in one place. Um, and and I I'd, I'd encourage every every teacher or student teacher to just have a, a have a flick through it. I, I'd be surprised if there wasn't something at least one thing in there that you 
you couldn't use either in the planning or the delivery of all the subjects on the on the curriculum, but in particular um, and PE, uh, a sport and, 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 and physical activity. OK, so just just a couple of the resources that um, that, that I want to just very, very briefly highlight um, are the, the GA activity planner. So it's learning.ga.ie forward slash planner. Again, all the links are on the document. Um, Charlie Harrison, my colleague who, who runs the, the cool camps um, and, and, and some other people got together and they created a filter um, I, I here for social distance friendly, friendly activities. OK, so there's a there's a there's a bank of activities here, uh, everything from movement skills to um, hurling, uh, football, camogie, ladies football and, and much more besides um, other other fun games and activities. There's um, there's there's a, a, a lot of activities here that you can clearly see. There's a diagram, a brief, brief explanation, um, and there's also videos in most of these as well. Um, I know that some teachers find this useful to show on the interactive whiteboards before they go to the yard. Um, it's the, the online activity planner. There's over a thousand activities there uh, that can be filtered by year. Uh, the type again, uh, the various movement skills and the various types of, of activity fun activities, um, basic drills, fitness exercises, etc. So it's it's a, it's an unbelievably um, um, uh, deep and, and, and useful resource, both in, in, in the planning um, and of your of your 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 your, um, your your PE and sport in the school, uh, but also for the children there through the videos. And again, um, the, the social distancing and the physical distancing appropriate activities there are are, um, are, are in abundance. Um, so relatedly, um, the, uh, the the Thrust program is a is a bank of resources developed by Leinster GEA, um, they have a, a wealth of resources there. Again, uh, some of them are specific to the primary schools, and and again in response to the the cool camps, um, which we successfully had seventy thousand children participating in this year. Um, they, they have produced a, a bank of resources that are again social or physical distancing appropriate. Um, OK, and I'd encourage teachers to go and have a look at that. And um, the last one I'm just going to touch on. And again, th there's 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 a there's a pile of resources here, but uh, one of them that that has been around since 2007 is the, the KMRI. And um, it's a it's a cross curricular resource um, touching on every subject of the curriculum, both for the six counties and um, the, uh, the, the Department of Education in Northern Ireland and the, the 26 counties, the Department of Education Skills. Um, it's 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 learning.ga.ie forward slash came again. There's a link in the document. Uh, I'll just give you the very briefest of, of views of it in case you haven't seen it before, but there's teacher notes across all the subjects and there's pupil worksheets. So let me just click on history here. For example, you can see the teacher notes um, again. Uh, they're they're aligned to the curriculum. This was developed by teachers for teachers. Um, my predecessor, Michal Martin, a principal in Wexford, would have led the charge on this. Um, and uh, there is a there's this te there's teacher notes as well. Um, there's teacher notes, sorry, and there's uh, pupil worksheets across uh, li linked to to all those teacher notes. Um, these would have formed the basis of the hashtag GA primary challenges that we produced eight weeks of resources during um, during during lockdown, uh, there was over 50,000 downloads across the junior classes uh, publication, weekly publication and the senior classes week, weekly publication. So there's um, within those there's a skill challenges, video skill challenges uh, that can be done in the back garden, in the schoolyard. And um, there's just an absolute wealth of resources. There's fantastic uh, resources there from Ulster GA, uh, PE lesson plans um, across uh, Denny key, key stage two for athletic, athletics, gymnastics, dance and games, and they have a, a pile of videos there as well. I wish I had more time to show you all of this, but I just again encourage you to go to this document and just you know f f have a look, have a quick look, and and again I, I I'm sure you'll agree it's 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 a fantastic resource. Um, so that's kind of um that's 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 pretty much it in terms of the um in terms in in sorry let me get my PowerPoint up here in terms of the, the that particular document um, and uh, just to ju just to say that we um, we as an association um, Shane Flanagan in particular the my boss the director of coaching games development would have been liaison with the Department of Education and the INTO 
throughout the summer um, in relation to the, the various guidelines coming out um, for the return, uh, full return to, to school, which is thankfully happening. And um, just, to, just to highlight this, and I'm sure many of you are aware of it, but um, you know, the, 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 I, I get clarification on outstanding issues from the Department of Education skills on the reopening of schools, a roadmap for the full return to school highlights that um, that that health professionals and sports coaches where 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 appropriate and applicable um, in line with the uh, board of management uh, the principal the teacher and the policy and procedures of the individual school that the the um, sports coaches and health professionals should um, at least endeavor to 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 say that they're there to help um, certainly sports coaches and that's what we are doing and we have been doing uh, over the last um, over the last few weeks um, there's been really positive reports throughout the country and uh, through, throughout the, the 32 counties um, of, of staff um, either in the process of getting back into schools in a face to face context or um, or, or, or many are already in there. And I just want to acknowledge um, the schools open, many schools openness and willingness to, to do that um, and, uh, and, and and your you know your cooperation and your collaboration on that is, is very much noted and and um, and uh, and appreciate it in the same breath. We, we, we do understand that there's many schools where that just can't happen. And, and again, um, David Goff will touch on uh, the, the, the training that we did around staff with that, that ultimately um, the staff will will um, will 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 only um, go go to the school on, um, on pre COVID or during COVID on invitation of the board of management, the principal and the teacher in question, but particularly at the moment, um, given the context we're, we're in and the challenges around COVID-19, um, that uh, that yeah, that, that, that the, the, this is up to the individual, um, and we are respecting the the decisions um, and around that around access uh, in relation to the individual schools and the the, the needs and the challenges uh, that, that that they face. As 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 our staff are are, are respecting the, um, the 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 policy and procedures of the individual schools. So just to um, move on to um, Owen Tuhi there, um, uh, he will talk to you about uh, some of the stuff very briefly the GA have done um, in, 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 in returning to play. Thanks very much, Pat. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, you're very welcome. I, I won't delay you too long with my section here. Um, I suppose just briefly to, to outline some key examples of what the, the GA, LGFA and Camogie Associations have done to facilitate the very successful return to play. Um, and I think we're all uh, very grateful to be in a position to, to say that the vast majority of these have gone very well. Um, all of the above in terms of uh, cool camps, um, club championships and hopefully now intercounty championships uh, have been run pretty successfully so far. Um, just to touch on the online modules resources, that we have available on the GA learning portal. If you're not familiar with that, please do check it out. Um, there's a plethora of resources there in particular with reference to, to Gaelic Games activities which are applicable across um, all sporting bodies in terms of returning to play with, with COVID-19. Um, as always, the health and safety of, of participants uh, is, is our foremost priority and that's the same here. Um, and it, it, it's not an exaggeration to say that all the activities and the return to play that we have seen uh, has been made possible, um, you know, largely due to the selfless acts of, of thousands of volunteers uh, throughout the country um, to help restore, you know, some degree of normality uh, to our lives. And that's that's a key aim here as well in terms of the returning uh, games promotion officers and, and games development officers uh, with, with the GA and returning to, to primary schools so that they will, will help in this um, resumption of normality to, to a certain extent as well. Yeah, so listen, just to touch on again, um, the full GA guidelines in terms of the play are available on learningga.ga.ie forward slash COVID-19. Uh, it's important to note that, as, as always, um, the HSE and government guidelines take precedence, uh, as always, but just the GA guidelines refer in particular to Gaelic Games activities. And of course, every primary school uh, in the country will have different approaches, policies and, and their own procedures in terms of the return to play and return to activity. Um, and the staff that will be coming in uh, will be 
uh, are there to assist in the physical well-being of, of students and they will be very much cut on all protocols and um, policies that are put in place by, by primary schools because obviously that's quite an individual thing. Um, just an important note in terms of the, the current situation with levels, um, Gaelic Games activity in the county uh, is conditional on the, the county being in level two uh, and certainly in schools. So there's no Gaelic Games activity um, if the county is in level three with the exception of adult club championship um, matches and, and inter-county games. So just to make that point very clear from the outset. Um, just briefly then in terms of, of uh, in more practical things, I know obviously yourselves will be well versed in, in this area anyway, but just to re-emphasize the, the, the Gaelic Games position on these um, in terms of sanitization. Um, personal equipment, uh, which is relevant in this instance in terms of uh, hurleys, helmets, uh, gloves and so on, um, they should not be shared. Um, normally, you know, staff coming into schools would provide some of these. We're asking that, that children participating would provide them themselves and would take responsibility as they have been doing with their own you know, materials, with, be it iPads or, or, or books or on uh, personal equipment in terms of sanitizing after use. Um, obviously, footballs and slippers provided by, by staff and they will be sanitized and disinfected en masse afterward. Um, we're not encouraging the use of, of bibs or anything like that that can be used by multiple people. Um, uh, shared surfaces, if, if applicable, should be disinfected. Uh, and hands, of course, should be sanitised at, at regular intervals. Just in terms of classifying the adult versus underage risk, uh, the current evidence still is that there's a low transmissibility uh, with those under 14 years of age, and there's a low transmission rate between child to adult as well in studies so far. Um, as noted there on the point at the bottom, outdoor activities uh, reduce the risk of transmission by up to 19 times. So we're encouraging that all activities uh, get against in, in primary schools be conducted outdoors. And we're also uh, encouraging smaller groups, be they in their pods, that, but they remain as so with just one uh, specific coach as well to reduce risk. Obviously, as you know yourselves, communications with parents is very important in this regard as well, so that children in particular at risk groups, uh, you know, have the option to, to they, they choose themselves to, to opt in um, so that parents can make a, an informed decision. And then very finally, just in the close versus casual context, just to, just purely as a point of, of information for yourselves, um, Gaelic Games activity is currently seen by public health as being a casual contact by those participants involved. Um, this is very important uh, in terms of us being able to get to the point we are because this allows incidents to be dealt with on an individual basis. Um, as long as public health interprets it like this, then we can continue pretty much as we are at the moment. Uh, if they do, change that policy, change the left to be implemented, and that will have obviously an effect on all of Gaelic Games activity, including those in, in, in primary schools. Um, yep, yeah, that's that's pretty much all my points here. Perhaps I think we're, we're moving on to, to David Goff now. Thanks very much, Owen. Um, so yeah, just on, on to you, David. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, just to uh, update you on the training that was given to GA full time staff uh, last week, which was GDAs and GDOs. Um, first of all, we set out the uh, the role the policies and procedures played in, in schools and how they were informed. So we spoke about Department of Education and INTO uh, input, the patronage of the school, the board of management, principal, staff, uh, and potentially parents association and students council and how that the, the, those policies and procedures would come about. We made it explicitly clear to all staff that each individual school would have a different policy or procedure in relation to return to play and COVID-19 and that uh, the first thing they are expected to do is to make contact with either the secretary, the principal, or the designated sport liaison officer, GA officer within the school before they come back and to familiarise themselves with whichever policy or procedure uh, the school has adopted. Um, we then spoke, spoke in more um, broad terms about the educational terms which may not have been familiar to the full-time staff in relation to pods and, and, and bubbles. Um, we explained to them that pods were strict in third to sixth class but that in junior infant to second classes, uh, they might not be as well adhered to. We also spoke 
about the expectation of face masks and we reiterate to the full time staff that they would need to follow whatever procedure or policy is within the school. And again, that's an individual policy and each GDA or GDO will have to familiarise themselves with each individual school's policy. In relation to their initial contacts and school visits, um, as we said, we, we, we've asked them to make contact with the principal PE, GA coordinator or secretary and to uh, make uh, a visit to the school. We have informed them that they should be filling out a visitor health declaration upon arrival at the school and that they would have to arrive at appointed times. We explained the difficult scenario um, facing schools with drop off times, collection times, and that if a GDO is invited to visit the school that they would have to arrive at the appointed time that they couldn't be uh, lax around that 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 ar arrival time. We also explained to them that um, there may be difficulties with the space that there would be available to uh, them to use outdoor facilities because of the different lunch times and break times and um, that students are being asked uh, to follow so that there wouldn't be as much space and time for that space as they might normally have been used to in the past. We then gave them a list of uh, some uh, considerations to, to, to listen uh, and, and to think about, um, about equipment, what could be used, what could not be used, how it would be kept clean between bubbles. Um, Owen has already reiterated that helmets, furls, gloves uh, can't be shared and, and, and it's impractical for them to be cleaned uh, while the GDO, GDO is, is present. We also spoke about uh, keeping uh, pods separate and having games or activities uh, small sided and in groups of, of, of a maximum of four to six, that those groups shouldn't mix and that the school may or may not be strict on this, but that most schools allow pods to mix on yards, so it would be the same with GDOs and, and, and GPOs. Um, we've also asked them to be um, uh, thoughtful in relation to socially distant activities and those can be found on, uh, as Pat has already showed, the learning.ga.ie website. The last considerations um, we, we, we asked them um, just to keep an eye out on um, yard times and their timing for sessions and to try and fit as best as possible inside the um, school's uh, timetable and just to explain to the GDOs that it will be an erratic timetable for, for the time being. The final point I'm going to make is in relation to the coming of months school and not shown to directive which was issued um, in August and um, that the National Committee um, instructed all counties not to organise or participate in any inter-school games or competitions until at least the 31st of October 2020 um, and it will continue to monitor the situation during this period and provide further instruction as appropriate. We would like to make this explicitly clear, there should be no inter-school games or competitions before the Halloween break. Common Amun School Nashunta will meet again during this time and issue uh, a new directive. And we would ask you to stay in contact with your unit of Common Amun School in whatever county you are in to keep up to date in relation to that national recommendation. Thank you, Pat. OK, many thanks, David. Um, some great clarity there. Just going to move on now, finally, to Dr. Richard Bowles. Uh, thanks, Pat. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I suppose my intention this afternoon is to talk a little bit about where your Gaelic Games activities fit into your regular PE curricular programme. And there may be things that might apply to extracurricular activities if they are up and running in your school. Um, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge that you know, you're the people on the ground at the moment dealing with the COVID restrictions and guidelines on a daily basis. Um, so I'm not going to give uh, definitive answers or ideas here um, because I think you'll need to adapt um, what I might say to suit your own context. And what might work in a small two teacher school might not be appropriate for a large um, 20 or 30 teacher school or vice versa. So. I'm asking a lot of questions and maybe giving some ideas over the next slide or two, uh, just to maybe get you thinking and getting discussions started in the staff room or around your school um, about how you might integrate uh, Gaelic Games activities into some of your PE time. Um, 
just supposed to look at you've been inundated with policies and guidelines over the last number of weeks, um, but I'm just going to highlight one policy here on the slide that's there at the moment. Uh, this, um, these two quotes are taken from the Returning to School Curriculum Guidance for Primary School Leaders and Teachers document that was published, I think, in July. And it's very reassuring to see that um, uh, physical education was highlighted as being a central part of children's well-being. So with that, that in mind, I think that gives us a good opportunity to try and foreground um, PE, physical activity, and some modified sport activities in our schools um, over the coming weeks, particularly as a lot of the children in the classrooms um, may, may not have been that active during the whole lockdown period. And this is a chance for us to, to, to make an impact on their lives. Um, Pat, if you go to the next slide there. So here I'm just going to um, raise an idea around meaningful experiences. Uh, the whole meaningful experiences in PE has got a lot of attention in research over the last number of years. And I'd like you to think about how we might make children's experiences uh, in Gaelic games uh, meaningful. And that's meaningful for all the children in your class. If you look at the left hand side, uh, there are six um, parts to that diagram. Um, and the research is suggesting that these six are very important um, to give children meaningful experiences of PE and sport. So things like social interaction, appropriate challenge, uh, developing motor confidence, competence, um, activities being fun, uh, the idea of delight, which is kind of a, a deeper sense of achievement. You know that moment when a, a kind of a light bulb moment when a child really achieves something significant, the kind of delight that comes from that um, and then personally relevant learning. So something that's deeply relevant to the child. If we take those points and think about how we might develop some of those over the coming weeks, particularly with a Gaelic Games focus. Um, so maybe social inclusion has to take place our, um, within our buds, our pods and bubbles. So the kind of social interaction that takes place in small groups. So your pods in the classroom may also be the pods you have in operation in your PE class um, outdoors. Um, making sure that everything we do um, is inclusive. So the activities we choose um, see, suit the needs uh, of all the children in your class and are pitched at an appropriate level. So regardless of whether um, a child is really um, skilled in particular Gaelic Games activities or whether he or she is a beginner, we need to try and see if we pitch them at an appropriate level. Can we use the next um, phase of, of, of coming weeks in schools to uh, develop movement skills? So things like running, uh, jumping, and maybe some throwing activities, if we can do that safely, agility, balance, coordination, those kind of fundamental movements that are applicable to all sports, not just to Gaelic games. Certainly in the younger um, end of the school, we can work on that, but also through other classes uh, using resources like the Move Well, Move Often resource or looking at the Fundu um, resources that are available on the GA website and trying to make it um, enjoyable with a focus on learning. So are the children learning something during the activities we've chosen? Um, even thinking about this idea of meaningful experiences, uh, maybe that starts a conversation within your school to see is what you're doing meaningful for individual children? And it may even prompt a discussion with the Gaelic Games coach um, as he or she comes into your school. So that we're thinking about being able to provide children with these meaningful experiences within the current COVID restrictions. So practically, what might we do? So on the left hand side, I have some general points. So I'm thinking small, regular blocks of activity. So it may not necessarily be your full one hour P class in one single block, but it might be more, more beneficial to split that up over the course of the school week. Um, taking activity breaks whenever you get a chance. Obviously, we're coming into autumn and winter, so that's going to be weather dependent. But if you can get out for a few minutes, it serves two purposes, I think. One, it gives you a chance to ventilate your own classroom. But secondly, it gives the children a chance to be physically active at regular periods during the school day. And maybe thinking about when you're going outside, that there's some purpose to the activity that they're, ta that they're, that they're partaking in. So there's some learning going on. Um, ensuring the, the importance of play being children engage in playful activities when they're outside. Again, particularly in the younger age groups, that, that the importance of play 
and social interaction, which they may have been missing uh, in the months that, um, that they were not in school since March on all the way to August. Um, David and Owen have talked about managing equipment. Um, so I'd be adding to that by thinking that where possible, um, equipment might be used within a pod um, or within the, the other uh, group structures you have in your class. So it's not shared outside the pod that make it easier to sanitize afterwards. If possible, children with their own maybe individual equipment, so a ball per child, if that's feasible. Um, if, if it's a hurley or camogie activity, they will have their own hurley and their own helmet and no sharing takes place. Um, where it, in, in, in practical terms, trying to have a mixture of individual, paired and small group activities. Again, to minimize the chance of um, too much mixing within your group, um, and trying to make sure that the, the activities in those small groups um, are meaningful um, and safe. Something you might try would be pupil designed activities. So you as the class teacher setting some guidelines, maybe outlining a piece of equipment that can be used, maybe giving a particular skill. It might be throwing at a target and asking the children to come up with their own um, game or activity um, around that. So in a, in a class situation, children might be working in groups of three or four, and each might design and try out um, their own game activity uh, based on your guidelines as class teacher. That can be a, a really interesting way for children to explore their own skills, and they will come up invariably with lots of really, really interesting ways uh, to do different things. As I mentioned earlier, this gives you a really good chance to develop movement skills. So short activity breaks might focus on one or two particular movements before heading back into the classroom. Uh, one, one last concept that I've here is the idea of arm's length defending. Uh, and this might be particularly useful in terms of if you are playing some small sided games and you are conscious of the social distancing aspect of that. Uh, I came across this um, concept through an American basketball coach um, and, and PE educator, uh, Steve Mitchell, a few years ago. Uh, he was talking about it in the context of giving children a chance to practice skills and make decision, decisions without being under too much pressure. So the idea would be that you have a zone around you that opponents are not allowed to come within arm's length of you during the game. OK, uh, so in, in it might be a useful way if you're playing uh, 2v1 or 2v2 or 3v3 games within your pod to have that rule involved, which adds um, from a game's point of view, the chance of ch children making better decisions and learning through that, but also within the, the context of co the COVID restrictions, um, it may be useful there too. If you move up there, Pat, I just here shown what I think uh, your pods might look like in a grid-based um, organization in your PE space, and I'm assuming you are outdoors. Um, I've um, drawn up this diagram on the basis of four groups. So if you have six children in each pod, each group would work within one of those grid areas, the blue, the green, the yellow and the orange. If you have more than that in your class, just add extra grids and adjust the grid size based on the space that's available to you. Um, you can use cones or space markers, but if you have concerns about hygiene around those, those items um, and you have somebody really creative in your, in your school, it might even be possible to paint um, some permanent circles on the on the playground to uh, delineate the different grid spaces that your pods can work in. So they might do some free movement in the pods, uh, maybe passing and moving activities, or you might do some kind of more line based drill activities, maybe going from side to side, diagonals uh, or other activities within the grid and then adapt and uh, incorporate your Gaelic game skills there, your football, your hurling, your camogie skills within those um, small groups. Um, be it striking, traveling, sending, receiving, but being aware of the need to sanitize beforehand and afterwards and manage your equipment appropriately. On the top right hand corner, you will see what's um, sometimes described as a hand whistle or a squistle. Um, if you yourself are concerned about using a whistle outdoors, particularly um, with um, the possibility of, of uh, your breath going um, around the space, um, a squistle is just a whistle that you squeeze, which makes the same sound. Uh, and it can also be used by other people once it's sanitized after each use. And it's probably a good, safe way to use a whistle for um, PE activities um, in these times. Um, so Pat, if you go to the last slide, uh, just 
Pat outlined the GA resources, which are, are really, really comprehensive and have lots of very, very useful um, ideas there. And I'm just adding three more um, here that might be of use. First of all, the Irish Primary PE Association have published some um, really good guidelines on managing PE um, in the current context. Um, the PDST has developed 120 non-contact activities. Uh, they're on the Skullnet website. And again, they're non-sport specific, but I think they can be adapted really easily at, into the Gaelic Games context by changing the equipment or slightly changing the rules. Um, and finally, for anybody who's interested in the meaningful PE and sport idea, there's a very interesting blog there um, on that whole concept uh, with some testimonies from teachers who are actually using the idea. And I think it might be really um, interesting to see how you might adapt that into your own school contexts. So to wrap up for me, um, get the children out as off, often as you can, um, make sure the activities are being conducted safely in the context of the COVID guidelines, try to make sure there's learning going on for every child at all times so that the experiences for them are meaningful. If they're meaningful, there's a higher chance that they will stay engaged, not just while they're in your, in your school, in your class, but as they get older as well. Um, so I uh, hope there's a few ideas there that might be useful um, and um, best of luck in trying out those things in the coming weeks and months. OK, OK, thank you, Richard. Uh, just to finish up, folks, just to wrap up. Um, yeah, you can see there are some very thought provoking um, concepts and ideas some practical tips there from from Richard. Um, you know, ultimately, this is about making some kind of a contribution um, to through through uh, the, the, the Gaelic Games family to the health and well-being of of Ireland's children. That's always been the underlying principle uh, of what we do and the services we provide to the schools. Um, and, and you can see that it's 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 obviously primarily for us about Gaelic Games, but it's it's, it's it is in effect a lot more than that as well. Um, I should have said from the outset that uh, there was nearly 500 registrations for the the event, there's hundreds of people on the call today. So um, unfortunately, we weren't able to facilitate a Q&A as originally planned. Um, we, you, you can contact uh, your, your local GPO, GDA or County Games Development Manager, um, or you can contact me directly. Um, all the details and contact details are on learning.gaa.ie forward slash primary school. And that is in effect is in effect is where everything all those resources I was talking about earlier and much more uh, can be found. Just a very quick update on the Five Star Centre for anybody that may be interested um, or engaged in that either last year or this year. The Five Star Centre obviously was cut short in, um, in, in, in early March due to lockdown. Um, we we are uh, we, we we are it was in it, it was and, and is it still in national pilot phase um so we've pressed pause basically on the the initiative for now any schools who who did uh, the initiative up until march um we will be communicating with you directly in the coming days to to look at some kind of recognition award uh, for the 2019-2020 school year and equally uh, we will be reviewing in light of, of COVID and, and also with one eye on the longer term, the, the project uh, go, going forward uh, possibly um, in, into, into 2021. But uh, for, for this school year, it's certainly just on, on pause. It's on hold at the moment. There's been a, a lot of queries around that. So, but we will be in touch um, uh, with further updates on that in, in the, coming, the coming days and weeks. Uh, just to just to finally acknowledge um, everybody's um, time, uh, all the um, Muntori, Bonscala, and te primary teachers and principals on the call today. We, as an association or the Gaelic Games family, uh, really appreciate um, all all the work that you do in the promotion of of Gaelic Games uh, right throughout the years, and in particular during these particularly challenging times. And uh, just to acknowledge acknowledge that and acknowledge your your cooperation um, to date uh, and going forward. Uh, is very much appreciated with with our coaching and games development staff. Uh, safe home. It's been a long day, um, and uh, Gordon Mila Magwith. <laughs>